we get introduced to NSVs, right? Our non-skill victories. And I remember one of my very first NSVs. Uh, I took my wife and my son and we went to go have dinner at a restaurant. And the hostess is like, uh, just three of you? And we're like, yeah, just three. And she's like, uh, I got a booth available, right? And so I'm like, okay. And so she turns around and starts walking and we start following her. We go and we sit down and my son's like, dad, like, did you hear what she said? And I was like, yeah, what's, what's the problem? We're sitting down now, right? And I'm like, what's the problem? He's like, dude, she said a booth. Like, my kids and my wife know and knew that booths were not an option for us. Because as a fat guy, you don't sit in a booth, man. Like, you don't, you're not comfortable, right? They never leave enough space yeah. between our gut and the table. And but see, I didn't even think twice. And when we sat there... And I looked down and I said, man, you know what? I didn't even think about it, dad. And, I, and my wife was sitting next to me and I looked down and I see this gap, right? <laughs> between my, my belly and my table. Hey there, my friend, it's Dr. Anthony Balduzzi. And I want to welcome you back to another episode here on the Fit Father Project podcast. In just a moment, you're going to hear a conversation to myself and one of our amazing Fit Father program members, Jesse Lopez. Jesse is 42 years young, and this past year, he found our Fit Father Project program and used our FF30X program series, our health and weight loss series for guys over 40, to lose over 80 pounds. But Jesse's transformation was so much more than just getting rid of the weight. He completely improved all of his health parameters in terms of his cholesterol, his triglycerides. He completely rewired how his body works internally, the kinds of foods he craves, his mindset, and he got his family living healthier too along the way. And the reason I think this particular conversation is so special to me is because Jesse is one of those guys, when he gets into something, he is just a shining light. And what I mean about that is Jesse has been in our community, sharing his progress, inspiring so many fit fathers. So I think a lot of you guys listening are probably familiar with Jesse. You've seen some of his posts, or if this is your first time hearing about this man, buckle up because you're going to get a lot of inspiration of just a real guy who committed to his health, who looked at his kids, saw his family and is like, look, I need to make some changes. I need to live longer and stronger and healthier for them. I want to get myself in shape. He was tired of being the healthy fat guy, if you will. Even though he was exercising, he still wasn't where he wanted to be. Well, he completely turned that around with his Fit Father lifestyle. And Jesse shows you how you can do this no matter where you're starting at, no matter what you think your limitations are, and you can sustain this with yourself and your family. So I'm so grateful to give you this conversation here with Jesse. I really love this one. I think you're going to love it too. So let's hop into this conversation today with Fit Father, Jesse Lopez. All right, Jesse, welcome officially to the Fit Father podcast, my friend. I'm pumped to have you on here. And uh, this is really exciting for me. So to kick this off, please introduce yourself to all the guys listening, name, age, where you're from, a little bit about your family, what you do for work and that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Uh, so my name is Jesse Lopez. Uh, I'm 42 years old. Uh, I live in a small town, deep, deep South Texas uh, called Westlaco. Um, I've been married happily now for about to hit 20 years with my nice. wife. Uh, we got three beautiful kids, uh, two daughters and a boy. Um, and for, for a living, what I do is I'm a store director for a grocery company uh, called HEB. Uh, we're located primarily in Texas. We do have some stores in Mexico, uh, but that's we're really just a Texas chain that's still privately owned, but yet one of the biggest retailers uh, when it comes to grocery in the whole nation. Um, so you know, uh, I've, I've, I'm, I, I just hit my 20 year anniversary with H B. Nice. As well. So you picked up a wife so, and you picked yes. up a job 20 years ago, and so absolutely. And so I think- and, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, I was going to say, I'm still happily uh, in love with both very much. That's so. a beautiful thing. Well, I, I think maybe that's an appropriate place to start, right? 20 years ago, you were 22 years old. And I imagine there was a lot of changes that happened during that 20 year period of time with your health and body. So kind of run me through where you were at before you found Fit Father. What kind of prompted you to hop on? What was going on with your health in your life? Yeah. So, for us, you know, when we got married, um, we got married, right, because, uh, you know, un- unforeseen circumstances, right? My wife uh, got pregnant, and so we did what was right, and we got married, and we went on, and, and, and 
we spent about the next, I want to say, five years just really uh, being young parents, right? Working paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. I started with this company 20 years ago as an overnight stalker. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I was primarily gone most of the day because when you work overnight, you sleep all day, Mm -hmm. right? And so my days were like, it's kind of like an eight to five job, except instead of working eight to five, I would sleep eight to Mm -hmm. five, get up. And then that would be my day. And then I would leave to work 10 p.m., 11 p.m. And that's how my career started. And so we lived with my in-laws, right? We didn't have a whole lot of income. Uh, I was the only one working. And so as the years go by, you know, you don't have time to focus on health. And and, and I was always a pretty healthy guy. I played football, uh, basketball, baseball, did track. Not that I ran or anything, but I threw the discus and, and the shot put. Uh, really it was cause we were going to get CC's pizza every time we had a track meet. So I was all, I was on board, but, but yeah, it was one of those things where health and, and us, you know, go to the back burner and it's about, okay, what are we going to do to raise these kids? Um, what's the best thing we can do for a job? How do we move up in the company quickly? Um, you know, how do we get you working? And I'm talking about my wife. And so This journey began where we decided one day to say, hey, you know what, Uh, we got to go back to school. And and so we started going back uh, with kids, uh, eventually got our degrees. And it wasn't until after we we graduated from college, both on the same day, which is Mexican Mother's Day here, which is pretty awesome. awesome. I I graduated with with a business degree and my wife with an education degree. Uh, So it was cool because the College of Ed and the College of Business had ceremonies at different times, right? So she got to see me walk. I got to see her walk. Uh, Anyways, we started our careers, right? And and so after two or three years of getting used to good income and stuff and then moving out on our own, got our own apartment, is when we first started like to say, hey, you know what? Let's revisit health, Mm -hmm. right? And so we must have been maybe 28 or in our 30s when we decided to do that. And so we got back into it. Uh, My wife was actually gifted from one of her aunts who suffered an injury, like four months of personal training at at our gym here. And so she would go and do these workouts with the trainer, but she would bring all that knowledge back home, right? So like what to eat, you know, we we had never taken protein shakes in our life. We didn't even know what protein was, much less what's whey protein or what whatever other proteins there are out there. Um, And so we kind of began to develop some good habits. And we actually got, I would say for the next, three, four years, we were actually pretty healthy doing good habits, good practices, right? We would prep our meals. Um, I've always had a passion for cooking. Like I love to cook and I love to entertain. And so I'm always looking for ways to combine both worlds, right? How do I take my passion for cooking, like smoking brisket and pork butts and all that, but combine it with how can I put something together that's healthy, right? That's that we're going to love, that it's, it's going to be good for us. And at the end of the day, it's clean, right? And it's beneficial. And I think the big kicker would be for our kids to enjoy it yeah. too. And so that's how our journey began. Uh, and so I would say I was about 37 when I first said, hey, you know what? I'm not getting any younger. Um, so I started researching and started looking up on YouTube uh, workouts for men in their 40s, mm-hmm. right? Because I was going to get there eventually, right? I'm two, three years away. Uh, I want to be ready. Yeah. Like, what does it look like, Right. And at the time I was doing a lot of stuff, like I, I never had like a, like a plan to follow. Like I would go to a gym and I would just, you know, grab a kettlebell or grab a dumbbell and I would, you know, do swings and then go into a push up and then go into like a press. And, and so I would do more of like this circuit training. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, you know, I would just do that. Right. But it was the same thing over and over and over. And the days that I wouldn't lift, like I would, I would primarily use a Stairmaster. And and if, and in my mind, if I could do that for 45 minutes straight, then I was doing something right, right? Um, later on, I dabbed with like uh, spinning classes. I would love to, I would go to spinning classes and I love them. I mean, I would come out drenched, right? And and I love the fact that I could keep up with some people that had been there, you know, longer, yeah. right? And, and that was always a challenge. But anyways, back to the YouTube and, and I find you, right? I found one of your videos early, early on. And it directly connected with me because or I connected with you because, you know, I think one of the first videos I ever saw was where you tell your story, mm-hmm. right? And and how you lost your dad and how that inspired you to become who you are and, and the mission that you went on and you continue to carry out. Uh, it was special to me because I lost my dad when I was three. Yeah. And so I grew up without a dad, right? 
uh, like I shared with you uh, a couple weeks back or last week, um, I've had other father figures in my life. Thank God, right? I've been blessed. I, I have a, a, an extraordinary stepdad who came into my life when I was about 20 years old or 18 in high school, sorry. Uh, my father-in-law who came in when I was about 20. And they've been, you know, pillars in my life. They, they've shown me what, what uh, I would expect my dad would have shown me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I've never had that lack, but it, I did have that window between the age of three and 18 or yeah, I didn't have a dad. And so a lot of stuff was, was new to me. Like I had to do a lot of my own uh, searching and, and, and I had to go and find out for myself a lot of things where today I feel like that's the advantage that my son has. My son has that advantage where I'm able to provide him with a lot of insight, right? That, that I never was able to get right growing up. And so I've always looked at it like, Every year that my boy or any of my kids, right, have lived past the age of three is is a, is one more year that they're beating me, that they're better, right? Because, you know, my boy today is 18, right? So for 15 years, right, he's had something I never had, mm -hmm. right, and, and which was a dad. And so I always see that as value added. And, and anyways, that's why I was able to connect with you so much, right? And, and I started watching your videos and, and you know what? I'll be the first one to apologize. I don't know why I never pull the trigger, right? Like I would watch your videos and I would do the workouts, right? I would, I remember one of the very first workouts you had on one of your videos was uh, dumbbells on our shoulders, right? And we would squat down to sit on a bench, yeah. right? So we knew we were going deep enough and then we would come up and press, right? Yeah. And so I remember, man, I would do that. And it was, and I started seeing like, okay, so it's a lot of like compound movements, yeah. right? It's, it's, that's what I'm going to look for when I get to the forties, right? And so, yeah, but I never did it, right? Unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, there was other videos that I, you know, dabbed with. And, um, I, you know, it's it's funny, right? We're always looking for that easy button. Like, mm -hmm. what's the quickest way that I can get somewhere, right? Whether it's wealth, whether it's health, uh, whatever, right? And so, for me, I just, I figured, I still feel good at that age, right? At 37, 38, I'm going to the gym every day. I'm eating right. I'm prepping my meals. So, I'm just trying to get proactive for later. Mm -hmm. Like I don't need it now. Right. And so the journey continues right down this road of not proper workouts. There's no strategy behind it. You know, prepping meals that I thought were good. You know, one of, one of the biggest eye openers for me when I started FFP was I forever thought sweet potatoes were the best vegetable you could have. Right. I, I thought they were a great vegetable. Yeah, I've come to read the material when I finally decided to join. And, and it's like, I found out that, you know, I was beating carbs galore, right? Rice and sweet potatoes were two of my favorite sides. Yeah. And, Anyways, and for, uh, and for so clarity yeah. there for people listening, it's like sweet potatoes are an amazing carbohydrate, but you were treating them as if they were a green vegetable. So you Absolutely. were like, let's yes. have a plate with a sweet potato for my vegetable and a side of rice. And so it was just a little overloaded yes. as opposed to maybe like some broccoli with the sweet potato, with the pulled chicken or pulled pork or whatever you're having there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Those, those were, that was like a go-to meal for me. Like I would, and I would use those, uh, like the prep, you know, plates that have the three compartments mm -hmm. and it was sweet potato rice or sweet potato quinoa or couscous. And then it was always, you know, yeah, chicken, pork, whatever. And, and stick them in the fridge on Sunday and eat the same thing for lunch, dinner for the next five or six days. Yeah, right? So you had a routine was, that was dialed in. It just had a couple of kinks in the, in the, in the machine cog and it was stacking up over time for context for people listening, Jesse, what was your weight at this time when you were kind of doing your own thing, watching some FFP videos, but you hadn't fully committed to the program. What was your weight around this time? Yeah. So the, the lightest, lightest that I ever got doing that route was I was able to get down to about, I believe my lowest at one time was 225, okay. 225. And when I had started at that point in time, I had, I was around 250, 255. So I okay. had dropped about 30 pounds. Doing the method on uh, you doing your general fitness, throw some effort at it, do the Stairmaster, do the exercises, prep the meals. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yes. Correct. Um, it was about a 30 pound loss. And then when you, st and when so, you, before you joined FFP, what was your peak weight? When I joined FFP back in late June, uh, first week of July, this past, you know, year, um, basically eight months ago, 
my starting weight was between 287 and 290. Mm -hmm. I I was 10 pounds or so away from 300 pounds, Mm -hmm. Uh, a place I never thought I would be, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just four or five years ago. Right. I I never thought I would get to a point like that, like ever, you know, I, I, like I said, so I continued down that path and I'm working out and I'm, you know, doing what I'm doing and, and little by little, slowly, but surely, right. We get the weight starts just coming on and it comes on and it starts stacking up and it starts stacking up. And all of a sudden, like, I can't stop it. Like there's nothing I can do. You know, it's just, so what starts to set in and kick in is, well, I guess everybody was right. Right. Like once you hit 40, like it's over. Right. And so your mind kind of starts playing with you and says, well, I might as well get used to this. Right. Cause this is what I'm going to be right for however much more time God gives me on this planet. Right. I, I guess let's just do what we can with what we have. Right. And so, continue to work out. You know, it's funny. I tell people all the time, like I, I really consider that I was one of the healthiest fat guys you would ever find. Right. Like, like man, I was, I would get on a bike. I would spin Stairmaster. Uh, I would live, you know, do a little circuit training here at the gym, whatever. And I, it would never, you know, funny story. And, and I think this is important, right? Cause it's part of the story. I, I, I would go to work after the gym. So I would shower at the gym and I would put my dirty clothes, sweaty clothes right in a plastic bag, put it in my gym bag and I would go to work. When, in, when I used to have a car, I would put it in my truck, mm-hmm. right? But then I bought a truck and so I didn't want to leave that gym bag in, inside my truck. So I would put it in the bed, yeah. right? Behind, take the hair out, right? And so we're in my office one day and it starts raining, right? Like it starts pouring. My admin sitting there, and, and there's another uh, uh, co-worker there, another female. And I look outside the window, and I'm like, oh, man, like, it's raining, right? Like, I got to go get my gym bag. So I quickly, like, run out of the office, run to the parking lot, get my gym bag, and put it back in my truck, right? Run back inside. I get into the office, and my my admin's still sitting there, right, because we shared an office. The other co-worker had already walked out. But as she's walking out, they're, like, giggling, right? And so I look at my admin and I'm like, hey, what's going on? Like, what are you laughing at her? She's like, sir, like, I'm sorry, but it's because, you know, the, the co-worker that had just left, as soon as I said, hey, I got to go get my gym bag and I ran out of the office, he's like, he goes to the gym? Like, what does he have a gym bag for, right? Like, like nobody would see it yeah. because I didn't realize how big I was. I literally inside felt like I was good. Like, I, I felt like I was, I would see other people, like other men, like coworkers of mine, like one in particular that I had there at, at that same store, and he was a big guy, like big guy. And I would look at him and I'd be like, okay, well, at least I'm not that big, mm-hmm. right? That was my mentality. And then one day we're in the office ordering shirts, company shirts, right, that we're going to get. And uh, my admin says, hey, what size do you want your shirt, sir? And I said, 2X, right? And that buddy of mine, they ask him and he's like, oh, I'll take two X. And I look at him like, dude, like you're way bigger than I am. Or at least I thought he was. Mm-hmm. Right. But no, we were the same size as shirt. Like we were now. Yeah. And he might've liked his fit a little snug and mine a little bit looser, but still like I was wearing a two X. Yeah. Like when I started the program, I was up to a three X yeah. in shirts. And so we get to a point where I start waking up with like some serious, like, uh, like chest pains, like right in here, I, I started getting these pains and it was, it was in the mornings when I would wake up out of bed and I would try to sit up and I would get this sharp pain and like, I would lose my breath and, and I didn't know what it was. Um, so my wife, of course, you know, uh, obviously being next to me would be like, Hey, after a couple of times, she's like, dude, like, when are you going to go get checked out? Like, what are you waiting for? Right? Like, what are you doing? And you know, and I'm like, you know, and after a while, right, you know, you, you, you start to understand that, Hey, she's right. Right. Like, what are you doing? Right. You got three kids, right. You got a great career, you know, a beautiful wife that supports you. Right. So like, what are you waiting for? And so sure enough, I said, you know what? And even at that, I was like, well, you know what? You make the appointment, like you get me your doctor and then you set it up and I'll go see her. Right. Like still, even at that, like I still didn't want to do it. So anyway, she does. I, I go see the doctor and the doctor sees me. She did blood work on me and I was like all over the place. Like my numbers were horrible. 
and I have them here and I'll share them with you in a bit. But for the first time in my life, she's like, hey, you're pre-diabetic. Um, you are, you have high blood sugar content. I was at a 5.8. Yeah. Uh, you're pre-diabetic. You have high blood pressure, right? So I'm going to have to get you on high blood pressure medication. Yeah. And, you know, and she was just going on and on, right? And I was like, so I was like, I said, hey, time out. Like, I, I just worked out this morning. That's why my blood pressure is high. Like, and again, she looks at me like, yeah, you worked out. Yeah. Right. So, and I get it, right. I was big. Uh, but I go, look, I've never been on any medication, like ever in my life. I've never, I've never taken any medication. I've never had to. And I don't feel like I need to start now. Like, so, you know, l- let me work on it. Like, I know what I have to do. Let me work on mm-hmm. it, right? And me thinking I'm going to tap back into what helped me, you know, 37, 36 years old, yeah. uh, even though basically that's what still led to me where I was at. Yeah. But I was being naive. And, and I said, hey, you know what? Give me a chance. And so she says, I'll give you 30 days. I said, okay, that's all I need. Give me, uh, give me 30 days. She's like, if you show slight improvement or anything in 30 days, then we'll consider not giving you the high blood pressure medication. Mm-hmm. But I'm letting you know right now, if there's no improvement, like you're going to start on the meds. I have to start you on the meds. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. So she recommended at that time when I walked out of her office, she gave me a can of Metamucil. And she recommended the Mediterranean diet. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's like, follow this, you know, drink Metamucil 30 minutes before your meals. Uh, it'll fill you up faster. So you don't eat as much. And, and and so I did, right? I walked out of there and, and I, I started doing that. But I also continued, you know, to say, hey, you know what? Okay, let's go back to prepping proteins and, and sides and get on the bike. And of course, at this time, we're all going through the pandemic. So there's no more gym. Yeah. So we had a bike in the garage. Uh, we had a treadmill in the garage. And we had maybe a couple of little, not much, like a couple, maybe one dumbbell that was a 30 pounder that I had ordered way back. Then. And so... I just started doing stuff in, in the garage, getting on the bike, you know, doing the Metamucil. I don't think I saw any improvement. That's why I'm always, I've always said that when I started, I was either like, I'm sure I was over 290 mm-hmm. because when I went back, actually I didn't go back, but after that week, it was Father's Day weekend. It was June, Father's Day weekend. I'm in my garage and I'm on my bike. And here you come again on Facebook, you come out through an ad I get a pop up, and it was a Father's Day special for FF30X. Yep. And I remember it was a crazy deal. Like you had a phenomenal offer, right? And I was like, if I don't do it now, like I'm never gonna do it. Mm-hmm. Like even if I don't stick with it, like just the curiosity of is there really something inside the program, or am I am I just gonna see all these videos I've already seen on YouTube? Like what is the difference, right? And so I told myself in the garage, I was like, you know what, like, dude, just do it. Like, just even just for the curiosity, right? And so I did. I signed up. And I remember my wife walks out of the house and uh, I tell her, I said, hey, uh, I just signed up for a program, right? I'm, I'm on the bike. And she's like, really? I was like, yeah, I, I know I've mentioned it before, but it's the Fit Father Project. And she's like... Is that the, the, the doctor you said lost his dad when he was young? And I said, yeah, I go that one. She's like, you've been seeing that for a while. And I was like, yeah, it's been a while, but, uh, but yeah, I finally pulled the trigger and, uh, but we'll see. I mean, what do I have to lose? Right? Like, I, I just don't want to get on meds and, and we'll see. So I started going and that's how we got on FFP. Uh, and we started with FF 30 X. Nice. And I will tell you that, you know, I don't know if you want to add something here no, this if you is, want to interject with it. I mean, yeah, I will share a few things actually. I think it's a powerful story. I mean, they're just the 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 mental, emotional, like gymnastics that you kind of went through over the years of doing thinking you're doing the right things, things aren't still aren't moving in the right direction. Despite you exercising all the time, you can't out exercise a bad diet. And not that your diet was necessarily bad, but there were some things in it that weren't necess- that weren't like really serving you. And then you kind of get a little bit of the wake up call with the chest pain. So you find the FFP, you join FF30X on a great deal. What starts to happen from there? Like talk, talk me through when you start seeing success on the program and what those early days are looking like. Yeah. So when we started the program, uh, first and foremost, I, I dived into it. And I, I must have spent the week probably 
just reading the data, reading the material. That's why I truly didn't start till like July was actually my start date because I spent about a whole week just reading. I printed out your your 100 page nutrition guide so I could have a hard copy, right? Even though I could go to my phone and, and access it at any time, I just, I wanted to have that hard yeah. copy, right? And so I read that thing off my phone, like page by page, right? And, and you know, and then you just, you know, I, I remember on, on on some of the early pages you write in there, right? Like, like you're building it up, right? Like, here we go. Okay, so there is no magic pills, right? And then, and, and I'm thinking, like, okay, well, there goes the easy button. Like, this guy, I guess, is really just gonna give us a, a good old nutrition plan, right? Yeah. And sure enough, you start reading, and and you know, one of the things that 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 really jumped out at me when I was doing my initial reading was when you provided like the 21 fast food options, right? And I think that's big for people like myself that are in the work industry and where we have an hour lunch, right, daily. And a lot of times, you know, I, I've always felt like if there's not an option that I can go to, if I didn't get a chance to prep, like I'm doomed, yeah. like I'm done, right? And so that instantly for me was like, hey, wait a minute, like I've never seen this anywhere. Like I've never seen somebody uh, like a nutritionist or anybody like really, really recommend like a fast food place. And this guy's giving us 21 of them. Like what? Like, yeah. So for me, it was like, okay. So I kept reading, started seeing the different meal plans and the timings that you had. Um, and then I kind of started seeing some of the recipes and, you know, and, and then when you get towards the end is when like I had that aha moment, right. When you like list the carbs and list the, the greens and I'm like, wait a minute, why is sweet potato under the carbs? Like, like what's going on here, right? And and so, you know, it starts clicking. Like the wheels start turning and it's like, like I can totally do this nutrition plan. Mm-hmm. Like, so now once I got that down, then it was, it was like, okay, let's see what these workouts are all about, mm-hmm. right? This is the fun part, right? Like, let me see what, what I'm going to do. And so, yeah, you know, I see the, the your first video on Apex 10, I never did big five. Like I didn't even mess with it because I guess when I was reading the material, maybe I misread it or, or, but I I think I read along, along the way that uh, if you had access to a gym, you know, where you would have a barbell and all that, then you would recommend the big five. And so I never bothered, right? We've done everything for the last eight months in our garage. Like we've never stepped in a gym. It's been in our garage from day one. And, and so I just did apex 10. I was doing three apex 10 a week. And I was doing, you know, the the hit workouts, right? Which was another great thing, right? Like I love the structure of the hit, and it was kind of like a relief. Like, wait a minute, what? You're telling me that I don't have to spend 45 minutes on a stairmaster, right. and I'm gonna lose weight? Like, there's no way I'm gonna do that in 21 minutes, yeah. right? And on top of that, you're telling me that all I have to do is whatever I want for a minute straight, yeah. jumping jacks, mountain climbers, whatever, right? Like. I, I think my initial hit workouts were on the bike. Nice. Like I would go as hard as I could for a minute and then I would coast for two minutes yeah. and then go as hard as I could. Right. And I loved it. I, I, dude, I loved it so much. I broke my bike. The pedal literally <laughs> broke off my bike. Right. So nice. Yeah. Like, it, so, and, and to this day we haven't replaced it. So we have found other ways, but anyways, early on, right. Um, you know, and, and then, the big, big thing, right? That, and I will tell you today, and I, and, and for anybody watching this podcast, there is nothing greater or or nothing more correlated with the success that that I've had, and and, and tons of fit fathers before me have had, than our brotherhood on Facebook, right? When I got into that thing, and I was on Facebook, right? But I wasn't, you know, like I had never been in a private group or anything like that, like. You know, I, I really, I had Facebook for, for two reasons. One was I coached baseball and my son for the, for his whole life. And so we needed to have Facebook to find out about drafts, to find out about tryouts. Right. And, and that's really the first reason I got Facebook. And then after that, my sole reason, and I use it mostly for anything is for Facebook market. Like I'm, I'm always looking for that great deal on whatever it is. Right. But when this brotherhood gets presented and it's part of the sign up and, and the, the process, right? Man, I was, it was, I don't know how to describe it other than I had never had that kind of accountability 
at my fingertips. Mm-hmm. And it, it totally changed everything for me, right? I remember writing my mission statement, which is another key component, right? And I remember my initial goal was to lose 20 pounds in the next 30 days. Mm -hmm. Because my goal at the time, we're in July, my goal was to lose 60 pounds by December. Mm -hmm. I was going to have my daughter skiing say in January. And I said, man, if I can lose 60 pounds by December, I'm going to be 227, 230, Mm -hmm. right? Which was what I felt was the best shape of my life back at 37, 36 years old. And so it was a no brainer, right? If I can get 60 pounds by December, that gives me 10 pounds a month. Mm -hmm. So I knew that, Hey, the first month you're probably going to lose the most. So that's why I gave myself that goal of 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. I said, if I can do the first goal 20, I have 40 left for like the next five months. Like, right. But never did I like, it was a long shot, right? Like I was just like, you know, I'm just putting stuff on paper, but but that, that really didn't matter. It's what I wrote in the mission statement. It was about becoming the best version of myself, mm-hmm. right? And combining my most fi- my most financially successful years in my career with the healthiest years yeah. of my life. Yeah. Like that was really my mission statement because if I can do those two things and put them together, man, my kids and my wife are in for a treat, yeah. right? Like they're going to reap the benefits, right? And so... I started, you know, my, my journey after I did all the reading, my mission statement, got the brotherhood going. And, and so here comes the next part, right? That, that for all of the new members listening and, and, and anybody who's, or maybe can co- relate to this. The next thing for me was like, okay, like I need to go buy all this equipment. Like that was in the back of my mind. But when I saw your video on apex 10 and you're like, Hey, you know, all you need is two dumbbells. Right. So I told my wife, I said, Hey, uh, like we don't need a ton of equipment. Like I'm going to run to the store and see if I can find, you know, some, as a matter of fact, I think we already had a set of 10 pounder Mm -hmm. and 15 pound dumbbells. Yeah. And that's what I started with. My very first apex 10 was with 10 pound dumbbells and it kicked my ass. Mm -hmm. It took me about, I want to say 50 some minutes, if not the hour. Mm -hmm. I was really, really now I, I, like I said, going back to the healthy fat guy, like I was able to complete it mm-hmm. one to 10, 10 to one, yeah. uh, no, no pushups on my knees. Nice. Uh, I could take breaks in between. Yeah. But, but you know, so there was a pride there, right? Like, Hey, I was able to do it, but man, it was a butt kicker. Like, and I just, yeah, I remember, and I don't know, I think we're all, we're a lot of us are guilty of this. We never start anything like on a random <laughs> day, right? Like it has to be a Monday, yes. right? Like, Oh, I'll wait till Monday. Like I already screwed up Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, you know what? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like you're part of the right, right? We'll face it on Monday. And that was the mentality before. And so sure enough, I start apex 10 on a Monday. I do that first one. And I'm like, I have to do this again on Wednesday. Like, are you kidding me? Like, Oh man. Like, so anyways, but I stuck with it. Stuck with it, and, and sure enough, right? I, I posted that first workout on the Brotherhood, and you get you know all these amazing people, right? You get these guys that are just beasts, right? Shane, Martin Reddy, yeah. uh, you know Ben Sterling, yeah. Cad, you know part of your staff, and and some of these brothers early on because we still were in the in the separate chapters, we hadn't had the unified Brotherhood yet. And I remember posting that, and they're like, "Dude, way to get that first one done." Just wait till you're, you see the improvements on time. You're going to get so much stronger. And I'm thinking to myself, like, man, are these guys just blowing smoke up my, like, does Dr. A pay these guys to just make <laughs> me feel better? Or, right? Like, what's going on, man? Like, but it was just this overwhelming support, right? And and that, that feel-good attitude that, man, these guys aren't going to let me fail. Like, there's nothing I can do that I'm going to disappoint these guys, right? I genuinely felt that, right? And so the journey continues and, and, and yes, they were right. Right. Like we, we, we start getting faster. We start getting stronger and you know, it's the, the changes start happening. And and then we get introduced to NSVs, right. Our non-skill victories. And I remember one of my very first NSVs, uh, I took my wife and my son and we went to go have dinner at a restaurant and the hostess, we get to the, to the check-in, right. And the hostess is like, uh, just three of you. And we're like, yeah, just three. And she's like, uh, I got a booth available. Right. And so I'm like, okay. And so she turns around and starts walking and we start following her. 
we go and we sit down and my son's like, dad, like, did you hear what she said? And I was like, yeah, what's, what's the problem? We're sitting down now. Right. And I'm like, what's the problem? He's like, dude, she said a booth. Like my kids and my wife know and knew that booths were not an option for us. Because as a fat guy, mm-hmm. you don't sit in a booth, man. Like you don't, you're not comfortable, right? They never leave enough space yeah. between our gut and the table. And but see, I didn't even think twice. And when we sat there and I looked down and I said, man, you know what? I didn't even think about it, dad. And, I, and my wife was sitting next to me and I looked down and I see this gap, right? <laughs> between my, my belly and my table. And I look over at my wife and I'm like, are you seeing this? Like, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I think I just had my first NSV. Yeah. Like, this is my first NSV. And she's like, what is an NSV? Right? And I'm like, it's a non-skill victory, right? Yeah. So I get my phone and I'm like taking pictures of the guys. <laughs> and I, I get on there and I post it. And, and of course, you know, tons of like comments and likes. And, and it was at that point where I was like, man, you know, this is, there's no stopping me here, right? Like there's, I don't see anything that's going to hold me back. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it was just, we started building momentum and we started just, and it was just, it, it, and it just started like, it was like a snowball. Like, and I will tell you that one of the things that I did as a member early on is, and, and I apologize if I offend anybody out there or whatever, but man, I was like a Facebook brotherhood FFP, like stalker, right? Like I was looking for those guys that had been in the program for years. Right. And, and they would randomly come on or come across like, you know, Vanner. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dude, uh, 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 a firm or farm, they farm. Yeah. Or first, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. Uh, you know, a lot of these guys, right. That had been like veterans, right. The least uh, spot, yeah. right. Like, dude, like, are you kidding me? Like, wow. And I would see these guys and I would be there like in my backyard in the afternoons, like just watching these guys and their videos and their progress. And I would, I would tell my wife, like, babe, like, look at this. Like, look at this guy. Like, look where he was. Look where he's at now. You know, he's 55. Like, dude, like, I'm telling you, this thing works. Like, we found the gold mine, right? Like, we found it, right? Like, and, and I remember I, 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 one of the posts that's real special to me, it must have been second week or third week on the program. It was early. And uh, you actually commented on, on the post. And, you know, I was like, wow. Like, right. Like doctor, like I, I had to do like a double take, right. Like that Dr. Balduzzi. And, but my post read that I had never heard my wife say, honey, I'm so proud of you. I, I'm so proud of you. Uh, your, your skin tones changing, your skin colors changing. Like, like, those were not words that would come out of my wife's mouth because I never gave her like a reason to say things like that. Right. Like I was okay with being out of shape and big and, you know, and so when I heard that and and, and she, it wasn't like a one-time thing, like she would constantly say it. Right. And, you know, and I was like, I remember posting that and then you went on there and you commented and I was like, man, like this is, I was not only changing physically, but emotionally, yeah. And, 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 and on the inside, I was becoming a new person. Right. And, and I, I, there was just so much more momentum. And, and so as you start going through the program, you start getting stronger, you start, you start getting faster. That's, that's a given, right. That's the physical side of it's going to be there. But I think more importantly, what started happening is you get better and you get more educated and you get smarter on the nutrition side. Yeah on on the emotional side and and so i i know when i first started i i i kind of started prepping the way i used to and i would go out there man i would turn on my pit and i would just you know chicken breast and 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 then salmon and pork loin or tenderloin and you know or, or lean ground beef patties or I would make preps like if I was feeding like an army of 20 <laughs> right like it was just like we had so many meals right and my wife would be like, we're going to eat all this? And I was like, well, hey, remember, like, you know, it's it's lunch, it's dinner, right? Because, well, you made it super easy for us with the breakfast thing, yeah. right, which is amazing. So you you cancel out one right. part of the fraction, right? right? We don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, it's just lunch and dinner. And 
And so, yeah, but then, like I said, as you progress, you're like, hey, but we can have the manwich for lunch. Yep. And we yeah. can have, you know, sardines and, and, and salmon in a pouch and, and on things that I had never been exposed to. So I don't have to do all this prep, you know, and things started getting simpler and Steve, yeah. things started getting easier. And you know what? We don't need those, those pre like separated containers. We can just make all the protein and put it away, yeah. make all the veggies and put them yeah. away. So every day we wake up, we get something new. It's not like, oh, for the next five days, I'm going to have A, B, and C. Yep. A, and like, no, like today I want A, B, and E, right? Yeah. And tomorrow I want C, B, and, you know? And, and so, like I said, those are some of the things that really, really became foundational for us and I think have led to this success, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, it just it just started snowballing from there. And, and, and yeah, was, was there some hiccups? I, I call them hiccups, not with us, but with our kids, because we threw everything out. I got home from work one day and I was like, hey, yeah, open up the pantry. And it was like pop tarts and popcorn and chips and, you know, like trash, trash, trash. Opened the fridge and dairy got rid of it. Like we just started chunky stuff to the point where our kids were like, hey, like what's going on? Like we're still here. Like what are we going to eat? And, and you're going to eat what we eat, right? And, and it's as simple as that. You'll thank us later, yeah. right? Uh and sure enough, yeah, there was a learning curve more for them than for us. But now it's it's a way of life. It's a way of life. And and we've only been in this thing eight months. And, and it's life-changing. It's beautiful. Totally life-changing. Well, I want to ask you one very specific question is in the eight months, what's your weight at today so people can hear the journey? And and what did you achieve at the end of the 30 days too? I'd love to know just out of curiosity, yeah. that mission statement, what your weight is today? And then I have some questions about your family. Absolutely. So... Uh, weighed in this morning at 202. Okay. Started at um, 287 to 290. Okay. So yes. Close to 90 and, pounds. Uh, weighed down. in today at 202. Nice. Yes. And then um, uh, my first 30 days, I actually beat my goal of 20 pounds. Uh, I lost 22 pounds. Yeah. You dropped it. So I, I, yeah. I lost 22 month one, 20 month two, and 18 month three. So my. Six month, sixty pound goal Whoa. was met in three months. You crushed it, and then you went to your daughter's quinceanera with about eighty, almost seventy, eighty pounds down, right? But right. yeah, so it's funny that you mentioned that because when I got to the sixty in three months, Cat reaches out to me, right? And, and God bless Cat's soul, like she is amazing, right? And I know she has it in for me because I've been pushing for Ben Sterling cutouts, and I don't know, you know, I don't even remember how that started. <laughs> But, but anyways, so we're going to get you too, Kat. Uh, but Kat calls me. She's like, hey, do you want to come on a, on, a, on, a, on a call with our staff that we have every, like, Wednesday? I believe it was a Wednesday. Yeah. And I'm like, are you kidding? And she's like, yeah, like, we'd love to have you on. And I'm like, yeah, like, I'm down, right? Like, what do I do? So anyways, when we finished that call, and I, I got to meet you and a lot of the other members, right? Like Craig and them. And it was, it was really good. I felt as, as honored as I am today, I, I felt really honored back then. And I remember after the call, Kat sends me an email and says, hey, uh, so yeah, Dr. A says you need to stop sandbagging your goals. <laughs> and it, since you already lost 60 in three months, he says if you hit 75 pounds loss by December, right, we'll get you on the podcast. He'll bring you on his podcast. And I want to I want to clarify, like, this was completely made up by Catherine. I want this to be on the public record. <laughs> this is Catherine. Yeah. Good job. Yes, Catherine did it because she asked. She got me going. I said, "Say no more." Like it's 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 a deal, right? And so yeah, like it was not that I needed any more. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, I was already sold, right? And but yeah, so I started going, and yeah, we hit the seventy five right before Thanksgiving. Nice. And uh, and so so after Thanksgiving till now, like yeah, it's been like the maintain. Yeah. But man, I mean, I never expected to be here. Like I never. I never in my wildest dreams, like I just posted this morning, today was the first day I've ever shared my before and after pics with the father, with the, with the group, with the brotherhood. Right. And I just, I, you know, I don't know why I hadn't done it. I just, I was waiting for that moment when I was like, okay, like, yes, like I love the way I look. I, I, I I'm, you know, and, and so I did it today. Um, Congratulations. I know it's a, it's, it's a, and it's yeah. a special day for you, like doing it on the day of coming on the podcast. So that's awesome. 
And I, I think yeah. this journey of being a fit father is is not an end destination, as you know. It's a way of walking and, and carrying oneself and continuously improving and becoming that best version at every slice. And it's very clear you you went far in a very fast amount of time. And what I'm most excited about is your next 40 years. I mean, with the, with the habits you have, with everything you're going to do, when your kids start having kids and you're, and you're firing up the pit and you have grandkids running around and, and you're teaching them some of these habits, like what? Life is, life is beautiful, brother. And congratulations on everything yes. you've done. Truly. Thank you. I want to thank you so I wanna, much. I want to ask you this now, um, as we kind of move into the the back part of this conversation. I want you to share a little more about your family because I know your wife has been doing this alongside of you, and I imagine your kids have seen <laughs> some of these garage sessions over the period of time. The sweat angels on the ground, and there's been an impact yes. with them as well. And we've talked about it a little bit, but let's let's talk a little bit more about the impact that's kind of happened within your family with your wife and your kids. So first and foremost with my wife, um, man, she has like the best of both worlds, right? Because one, she doesn't have to do any cooking, right? right? So she doesn't even have to worry about the nutrition side of it. All she has to do is eat what I put in front of her and she's going to succeed, yeah. right? So, and I always hear a camera about that. And so that's one thing that I do have to warn you. Like my family, my kids, my wife, I, I think I've created some monsters. Like we talk so much trash to each other. Like we, we are a big trash talking family. And so, yeah. So my wife, like, you know, so I always tell her like, well, you don't have to worry about nutrition. Like all you got to do is show up. Right. And, but on the workout side, I, my first token for FMP was gifted to her. Mm -hmm. Right. And I kept telling her like, Hey, you need to do your mission statement. Right. You need to join the sisterhood. Like, I'm telling you, those things are invaluable. Like, you have no idea what it feels like to be in your garage working out and seeing all these brothers, right, like, in your mind behind you, yeah. rooting you on. Like, dude, you got one more set. Hey, we're about to get to that hill. Are you? How are you going to get off the hill, yeah. right? And, and so, like, it's powerful. To this day, this morning, I just did the Great Destroyer. I had my brotherhood in there. Yeah. You know, I could hear Shane and Martin and, and Paul and Werner yelling at me like, dude, let's go, <laughs> right? But So I would tell my wife that, like, you got to reap those benefits. Like, I can't give you that. Like, and I don't even know if FMP and FFP are the same thing. Yeah. Like, maybe they are for the first 30 days, but I don't know what it's like after that. Like, only you will find out, yeah. right? But but my wife never, you know, she's not, she, she doesn't really like to be on social media and, and she's not really like socially active like that. And so, you know, of course I was never going to pressure to do it. So we came up with a compromise. And, and so the compromise was, look, whatever workouts I'm doing. And, and like, when I jump to the next one, like you'll just do the ones I just did. Yeah, I like that. And so that's how we started. She started with Apex seven and then she went to double trouble and then she went, you know, and she just followed the list, right? Just like I was doing the program, she was doing nice. it. Obviously with a lighter weight, right? But man, she just started crushing it. Like she lost herself like 45 pounds nice. in the same time that I lost like the 75. Nice. So collectively we lost way over a hundred pounds, 125 pounds combined. It's <laughs> like easy. Yeah, she crushed it. And, and, and like I said, to this day, like, oh, my God, she talks so much trash. Like, you know, like, oh, these 25 kettlebells are so light. I only need to do, like, 15 minutes or whatever. And I'm like, dude, like, whatever, right? So I always said her stuff, like, yeah, Dr. A told me about people like you, like, whatever. <laughs> but, but, yeah, and then my kids, my kids are, you know, my son and my youngest daughter are real competitive. My older one is, she wants to be a pharmacist, right? So my older one is like, and she's just gotten, like, she's she's gorgeous, right? Don't let my other two hear that because they'll get upset. But, but yeah, so the older one is like, she's all focused on school. She's going to get, she's a pharmacy tech right now. She wants to be a pharmacist. So she works out every once in a while, but she's never really had to. Yeah. Like, she's, she has, like, some good genes, yeah. right? But my boy and my younger one, like, man, they love to work out. They're real athletic, right? They're real active in sports. I've coached my son since he was, you know, two, three years old, right? We've done baseball our whole life. And last year he graduated from high school. So it was bittersweet, but, you know, it was a great ride, right? And now my daughter is a freshman, the baby. And so now I get to focus on her for the next three or four nice. years, right? And then really just hit training hard. But as FFP started and we started doing the workouts, they would go out there. And, you know, and, my, and like I said, like these guys, they talk so much trash, right? So they're like... 
what are you doing, Dad? And I was like, oh, it's just, it's one of the workouts or whatever. Like, it, you know, they would see me with 15-pound dumbbells, and they'd be like, oh, really, dude? Like, 15-pound dumbbells? Like, come on. Like, like you know, whatever. So I'm like, dude, like, won't y'all do it with me? Right? Like, let's let's go, right? Like, you know, the tens are right there, whatever. Or you're stronger, right? You know? And so, yeah, I remember actually my son, we were doing the Monroe. I think it was the Monroe. Yeah. And we're doing these supersets. It must have been, like, the second set of supersets. Where he's like, hey, dad, uh, you know, I, I got to go to the restroom. Uh, uh, I'll be right back. Right. And I'm like, okay, bro, like, I'll be here waiting. Right. And I'm, you know, benching or whatever. And yeah, he never came back. You know, to this day, like, he never came back. Right. And of course, like, I'm always throwing stuff in his face. Like, dude, whenever you want to go, bro, like, we're there. Right. Like, we'll be waiting. Right. You know, me and TGD will be waiting for you or, or me and the assault or whatever. Right. Me and Mr. Kennedy. And my daughter, the baby's actually the one that's done. She's done about four or five Apex 10 with me when we started. Nice. She's done uh, some other workouts like hit. Like, man, we had a hit session one time. I'm telling you, this program gets you like to do crazy things that you've never done before. We did a burpee hit session one time nice. because another brother, James Riley, thought it was cool to tell people like, oh, yeah, like, you know, because he's a beast yeah. in his own world, right? And so we started doing burpee hit sessions and she's doing it with me. And we're there like, you know, as many burpees as you can in a minute. And we're like 20, 22, 23. And I'm like, what are we doing? Right? Yeah. Like, but she kept up and she's a warrior, man. And so, yeah, like just this morning, my son is walking out. Right. And, and so now we have this thing where like we walk down the hall or whatever, and like we'll bump into each other. Like, hey, excuse me. Or whatever, like, hey, you know, like move out of the way or whatever. And so he tried to do that this morning, man. And we bump each other. And I'm like, I go, bro, like I just did a hit. I just did a heavy bag hit session yesterday. Like, you don't want none of this smoke, right? Like, <laughs> you better just start going, right? And so he's like, whatever, whatever, right? So he takes off, whatever. But yeah, I mean, we have so much fun now. Like, it's what's, what's really, really crazy is that all this fun and all this trash talking and all this, you know, it all revolves around our newfound way of life, our new health, right? Like, this passion to get up every day and just be the best version of ourselves, yeah. right? One of my favorite things going through the phases was when I would get to like week four of a specific phase, I was like a kid at a candy shop opening up the next phase to see what the new workouts were going to be. Yeah. Like, man, I was like, oh, and then I would say, and I'm like, dude, like, babe, look at what he's giving me next phase. Like, check this out. Like, dude, the, you know, the TGD yeah. or the, the Great Destroyer, or, you know, the Bullet yeah. Runner, like, dude, like. Yeah, like for me, that was always like a highlight. Like it was just, it kept me going, yeah. right? And and now that I'm in phase four, the sustain and, and, you know, and I get to do whatever I want and venture out, like, man, it's, I'm having so much fun. I, I will tell you for those listening, I started Apex 10 with 10 pound dumbbells. Took me over uh, about an hour or more, right? I did an Apex 10, I think the week before last or last week, with 40 pound dumbbells oh, and I knocked it out in like 32 minutes or 33 minutes. You know, I, I was doing the great destroyer this morning with a 70 pound kettlebell for my swings. And I did the rest of it with 30 pound kettlebells. I knocked it out in 34 minutes, right? Like it is amazing how strong and how fast we can get by just following the program and trusting the process and, and, and really just, you know, making nutrition the foundation that it should be right. Um, it's, 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 it's amazing. You know, if I may add with all life said and all the surprises that I've had and all the eye opening moments, I will tell you that still to this day, nothing, nothing at all comes close to surprising or that surprises me the most is how we're able after 40 years old, I was 42 now, right? To completely in eight months, and and, and this this probably happened two three months ago. So in, in a matter of three to four months, completely rewire and reprogram our bodies internally. And what I mean by that is like the way we can change our taste buds, the way we can change our gut bacteria and stuff like that by by taking the right probiotics. And you know when I started the program, a cup of black coffee or or a cup of green tea. There was no way that was going to happen. I tried it, you know, and I remember going to the brotherhood and like, okay, man, like, what are we going to do here, bro? Because this is not going to work, right? Like, what do I add to this stuff? 
And, you know, and he was trying to be as nice as he could, right? But, well, you could have some stevia or whatever, right? And, and I'm just making these faces. I don't even know what he, yeah. you know, that's the problem with messaging, right? You never know what the other person's expressing. But for me, it was like, well, you could use Xtevia, but yeah, you really shouldn't use anything. And then you would get all these brothers behind him, right? Like, hey, you're going to get used to it. Give it time. Give it time. And I'm like, yeah, there's no way. Now, oh my God, like I drink, I'm not a big coffee drinker. So I only drink coffee when I fast, right? On my fasting days. But man, I can't wait for my black coffee. Yeah. Like, man, I I want it. And, and man, I, I guzzle that sucker down and, you know, green tea. Now I add apple cider vinegar to my green tea. Like, that's crazy. Like, what? Like, I, that to me, to this day, still surprises me the most. Like, that we can, you know, regardless of our age and regardless of all the years of bad habits and, and whatever it was, we can still change internally and then ultimately leads to our external change. It, it's just, it's mind blowing. It blows my mind every day. Jesse, like I, I'm going to tell you, too, I'm, it, I'm so it blows my mind too. Awesome. I've seen it. Yeah. Thousands, if not tens of thousands of times at this point, it blows my mind every single time it happens in such a short period of time, which I think this is like hearing your story. It's one, a message of hope, really, of hope that it's never too late to turn it around and the results you can achieve in a short period of time are absolutely life life changing. And what I also love that you really shared is just like the joy that you have with your family now. Not that you guys didn't have it before, because clearly you did, but the renewed joy that comes from the basis and the foundation of health is different. There is energy behind that joy. The family is active because of that. And honestly, you're a pillar. You're the father and a leader of this family and you've set the tone and everyone's fallen in sync. And that's just so cool. And man, I'm just so proud of you. And it it makes me so happy that I've gotten the chance to come out to Texas and meet you in person. And for all those listening, uh, we actually did just film uh, for our Fit Father uh, for Life members, a new yoga program that Jesse is featured in. He was one of our our mo- Fit Father models throughout there, and he he was out there in Texas, and he did like two hours of these yoga workouts, and he's sweating like a dog when he got done with that. And it yeah. was it's just it's really cool that all the stuff we've got to experience together, Jesse. And I'm truly appreciative of of you sharing your story for all of us. I know there's going to be a lot of guys in the brotherhood who are excited to hear this one, who have is smiles on their faces just like I did. This whole conversation, we're really proud of you. And I'm excited to see what 2022, the rest of this year has in store for you next year, all the stuff you get into, uh, you training your daughter over the next several years, man, just like yeah. good. There's so many good things that I'm feeling right now. So congratulations, bro. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And then uh, I do apologize. I tend to talk a lot. So we ran past or over our time. I'm sorry, but, uh, but yeah, I just, you know, before I let you go, I, I just, I do want to, a couple of things that I, I do want to share with the brotherhood and, and with your team, yep. just, just again, right. To help somebody. Uh, when I went to the doctor, that initial visit that I told you about, my cholesterol was at 189, triglycerides 216, uh, LDL cholesterol 104, uh, non-HDL cholesterol 138. My glucose was at 142. Mm-hmm. My blood pressure was at 143 over 86. And when I went back three months later, after three months, I went back. Cholesterol went from 189 to 145. Triglycerides from 216 to 88. LDL cholesterol from 104 to 75. Non-HDL cholesterol, 138 to 92. Glucose dropped from 142 to 98. And this was a big one. Blood pressure from 143 over 86 to what the doctor called perfect blood pressure, 111 over 55. And so that is the power behind FFP. And and I will say this in closing. A very long time ago, a brother-in-law of mine said, you know, Christianity is like when you're on the outside looking in, it's it looks like a very narrow road, right? If you want to live that Christian life, it's a very narrow road. And or that's what we feel and that's what we see when we're standing on the outside. And so I will say that FFP. For those that are barely joining or thinking about it, it it does look like it's a narrow road. But once you get on that road, man, that road just opens up and it becomes probably one of the widest roads you can ever get on. And I will tell you that seeing you last week in, in Austin, seeing the joy on your face to see the joy on mine yeah. was 
man, I, I, I appreciate you. I, I love what you do. I love what you're about. Uh, and your entire staff and your program have saved my life and, and I will forever be grateful. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank, thank you. you, brother. The pleasure is mine and uh, appreciate everyone tuning into this amazing conversation. Jesse, thanks for taking the time today. Thanks. Appreciate it. Y'all take care.